Welcome to the Whitetail Legacy Podcast. Tomorrow is opening day. This morning, didn't have a great hunt. Deer didn't move like usual. We just got set up in the middle of this bedding thicket. Um, we've been saving this spot for the rut. It's a nice, I think it's a nice buck. It's a 170. That was money. I think he's down right up there. 10 yards. Woo! Whitetail Legacy Podcast. Bringing you back to the hunt and leaving a legacy. That OG real dream. All right, guys. We got Cameron Deerfield on talking about Papa's pride. This Bucky chased for three years, right? Or yeah, pass, yeah. pass, you know, wasn't chasing, but targeted this year, got it done on a giant. Um, we hope to bring you a lot of these stories where it's just normal guys putting in hard work and uh, showing you what it really takes to shoot these big deer. Um, uh, we'll get right into our partners. We'll start off with uh, Veteran Innovative Products. Um, we're going to be at ATA talking all about this this broadhead in the coming months, or coming month, I yep. guess. And um, one thing I just want to talk about is the past through performance of this broadhead. We we said it a lot, but uh, a guy took a questionable shot of whether you would get a pass through or not. Blew right through broadhead's premium. Hit a lot of bone. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, <laughs> he hit a lot of bone in where he placed his shot, and uh, still got a pass through, and the broadhead is untouched. So go ahead and hit him with the VIP veteran broadhead shout out. VIP veteran broadhead shout out this week is No Hernandez. No is a United States Marine Corps veteran. So, No, we can't thank you enough for your service. Uh, from Cody's family, my family, everybody here at Whitetail Legacy, and Matt and Cindy. And the VIP family. The Did VIP you say that? family. Oh. Yeah, I always, oh. I always forget that. Yeah, I got you. I got your back. That's what I'm here for. Um. Uh. Let's get into scent lock. Hit him with a. Hit him with the number. Oh, yeah. We are. Yeah. Hit him with one of those. Yeah. Still in the series here of the scent lock seven. Well, this is this is before the. No. Oh, oh no. This is Papa's baby. Oh. Oh yeah. That's right. So, uh, step three, of the scent lock seven is head cover, controls breath, hair, and skin odors. So they're referring to their gator. Oh, yeah, and like the hat, the beanies and the hats and stuff. <clears throat> Which is one thing I want to cover because I don't know if you've noticed it with the gator, but the gator is, you know, basically an, essentially a face mask from the eyes down mm-hmm. to your neck, through your neck. Super on, warm, man. I yeah, love how warm it is. Very warm, and on the back it kind of wraps up and over your head to where if you're wearing a hat, it's going to cover it. But one thing that I really like about it, it doesn't like get um, that moisture mm-hmm. trapped in there. Yeah. Because like I've had other face masks. Doesn't you're get like and wet. After you're sitting all day, you yeah. get to the evening hunt. I mean, it's your face cold mask is frozen. Wet. Yeah, yeah. On really cold day, it's frozen. So yeah. one thing about that gator, it doesn't keep that moisture trapped and freeze up on you. It's crazy how warm if you just how much more warm it is if you just put something around your neck. Like right. How much more warm you stay. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I definitely utilize that this year. Yeah. All right, uh, let's talk about ECW. You hit something on ECW. I've... Yeah, it's uh, all American made, custom wood. Um, if you want to get crazy and get into some exotic wood, um, Jeff could definitely do that. Be sure that you look them up on Facebook. Jack Daniel barrels. Can I get a Jack Daniels grunt tube? I don't know. That that's a that, that's a very good question right there. You should ask him. Um, That'd be sick. Look them up on Facebook and EmoryCustomWoodworking dot com. Ingram's outdoor obsession. Um, I'm just about ready to take Mr. Freeze to him. I'm right there. Like I called him today. He said he had one coming from muzzleloader. Second shotgun season wasn't very good. Five or something. But then he said he had six or seven from first shotgun season that came in second shotgun season. Nice. I was like, so people are waiting, Mm -hmm. trying to fill it out. Because, I mean, it was cold, so. Yeah, figuring out what they wanted to do. You know, a lot of, like, I put my head and cape in the freezer last year. So if you can get it in the freezer, it was in the freezer for, I don't know, a week. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you can get it in the freezer, you can wait. But uh, Kind of a big decision. Yeah, kinda. it's kind of a big decision on yeah. what tax you want to use. You know, 
and you might want to call around. You want to, you know, everyone wants to know your price, your turnaround, what, you know, what you got going on Mm -hmm. and then look at your work. That's one thing we really get. We need need to strive for Ingram to, we need to showcase how good he is and get him out there because he is, he's killer, but no one knows he's there because he's, yeah, he's marketing through us, you know, but not, not much else though. So, but does super quality work. I cannot wait. Do you guys see the mounts this year? He's going to pull off. They're going to be sick. So. Some cool stuff getting ready to come out. All right, guys. We hope you enjoy this episode. We're talking about a gigantic buck. We're talking about a guy that put in so much work. And I know I say that you can't earn a buck, but he definitely deserves this deer. Mm-hmm. He yep. put in the time. He put in the work. He put in the effort. Passed him last year. Um, can't can't say anything more than that um enjoy the story hope you guys learned something and uh if you if you want to um get the pre-story to this deer uh also involved in episode 47 uh we had cameron on and he kind of hinted about what this deer was about and what his uh tactics were going into this season so episode 47 be able to check out a little pre-roll and then tie you right in here all right here we go all right, we got Cameron Deerfield on the phone for you guys. This guy just put down a mega stud this year. Um, thanks so much for saving the story for us first. I know you got some other guys that wanted to get you on. Uh, this is a story that people are going to want to hear. A lot of excitement, a lot of struggle, I think, but a lot of drive and uh, just not knowing when to quit. <laughs> Well, uh, seeing how I called you and you had to hear me cry like a baby, I guess it's only it's it's only fitting. Yeah, man, I cry like a baby too, so I'm right there with you. <laughs> so, oh uh, yeah, man. But it's we got Papa's Pride. That's what we're going to talk about, right? That's her, that's the right name, right? Yes, sir. Papa's Pride. So, uh, so the the great the one of the best things we tell people about this podcast is we get to meet people. So we podcast with you. Uh, earlier in the year about you know early season uh baiting tactics and what else we cover in that homie you remember this deer yeah we covered this deer deer a little bit but we didn't really get in deep of what you had going on you know and then me and you struck up a friendship and you knew i was chasing a giant i knew you were chasing a giant so i don't know how many hours we got on phone right now we should have logged it up or text message but I mean, I was I was it's trying good. to buy plumbing in Walmart, and it took me like an hour and a half to get what I needed. Because <laughs> we were talking about this deer, so yeah, yeah. The, I mean, there was many. I mean, there was nights where I had to like pull over and like my and like and I had to let my uh my uh wife drive, and I was just like texting you like, dude, I don't know what to do. Yeah, I'm ready to just give up. I'm ready to bang my head against the door. Like, <laughs> that's always I mean, it's super it was, cool for me to be able to follow you along, and then when I got that phone call. I was like, you text me first, and I was like, yes, you know, and then you called me, and I was I was ready to, like, I think I was in my boxers. I was ready to go out to the woods <laughs> right then and there. <laughs> so, but. Yeah, uh, man, it was, it was definitely something. I mean, it was like, I don't know, man. Uh, that's something that I've dreamed about my entire life. So, like, when I, and, and it, it's kind of cool because, like, from our first podcast and now, it's like, you meet very few guys that really, you know, I mean, we're, we all hunt, but you meet very few guys that just, like, give it their all. And, like, that's their entire life. Like, they've given up every other hop before that. And it's, like, me and you just clicked on that. And then we just happened to be chasing giants. And it was just, like, all right. And I, I was, like, after that, it's like, after about the fourth or fifth day of us just texting, not, like, nonstop, I'm, like, all right, this dude gets it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah like, you need to get homie's number was, man he, you got you got his number oh, yeah, no. sure. yeah homie homie's the same way i am i don't know how many yeah. dude if we added up the hours oh. we got on this your freeze and text and <laughs> game plan and dude it'd be disgusting <laughs> i got more hours than that than i do railroad work <laughs> now that he's dead i could probably yeah. change my mobile plan <laughs> oh, for yeah. Sure. yeah so all right we'll for uh sure. we'll quit bs in here we'll just get back in the story uh I, this is your story so i don't want to interrupt you I'm going to be jotting down some notes of some stuff that I might want to like hit over. Um, but just start wherever you want to start from and, uh, and let, let us hear about Papa's pride. All right. Well, uh, Papa's pride, I guess he started back. Well, he started in my life back in 2015. Um, and he was a two and a half year old deer that just, you know, I, 
I could tell he was going to, he was a uh, 11 point actually as a uh, two and a half year old. And I could tell he was just, he was going to be something great, man. Um, but, you know, I, I was after tons of deer and he, he wasn't one I was after. So he kind of fell back and I just didn't really think about him. And um, 2016 rolled around and I didn't get a single picture of him. So, I, you know, as many deer do, they just kind of fade away and you don't even think about it no more. Um, and then 2017 uh, rolled around and it was August. And I set this ground blind setup up, which is not something I normally hunt out of, but I just wanted to try it. It was a spot that I haven't really, haven't really hunted and there wasn't any, any, any trees to really get up in. And, uh, so I, I set this spot up and I set a cam up and a week later I went and checked it and there was this giant on there. Well, I started going through trail cam pictures because that's the first thing I do as soon as I, as soon as I get a deer. And I found that picture from, from 2015. It was basically identical deer, just like on steroids. <laughs> so I was like, "Oh man!" So I so I named him. Well, my my wife's dad he trained racehorses, and they had a horse called Papa's Pride. And uh, so I told my wife I said she could name this deer. She named it Papa's Pride, and I didn't really like the prize part, so I changed it to Pride. And uh, so that's kind of where he got his name from. And uh, so from there, it kind of started. And, uh, that was August of 2017. I had another deer on camera named Zeus that I was after that I had, uh, three years of history with. And, um, so I went into that season with the mindset of killing one of those two deer. Um, Zeus being six and a half and Papa being four and a half. Um, first day of season rolled around and, I, and Zeus walked in and I, and I actually passed him because I was just torn apart on which, which, on which deer to shoot. Well, over the next few, you know, days, probably a week, I made the choice in my head that I was gonna, I was gonna shoot, shoot, shoot Zeus, and that was that. Well, it just so happened, Zeus and Papa's probably walked in at the same time, and that was probably the hardest decision in my entire life, <laughs> for sure. Uh, but I ended up pulling my pulling my bow back and putting it on Papa, and I decided not to not to shoot him. Uh, I watched Zeus put his put his head down. And I kind of like just turned, shot him, and that was the biggest deer I, that I ever shot, which was 153 inches. Um, so that's kind of where I guess that's where the obsession started. I guess I mean I, I obviously I was chasing him, and I liked him, but I became completely obsessed with him then. And um, saw him a few more times that. All, all last season, um, with people, I was out, I was out hunting with other people. Uh, of course, I was trying to I was trying to shoot a shoot a, a doe last season, and I couldn't find a doe to save my life. And yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> I just kept having bucks walk in, and I was like, man. And I saw him. Uh, I think it was three times. I, vid- I videoed him once, and then he disappeared around shed season. I jumped him up one day when I was shed hunting late. Because I mean, last year I mean, deer just held on to their 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 uh, their their horns forever. It seemed like. Yeah, same thing here. And, I was shed hunting real hard, and uh, well, Mister Freeze sheds were found like middle of March. Yeah, you know, I mean, pretty yeah. late. And he had just dropped him because I just walked that like four or five days before Nick did. Yeah, and I mean, this was in the beginning of March. I jumped, and he still and yeah, and he, and he still had both sides. Well, a guy down the road ended up finding the sheds, and he wouldn't. He told me that I had to pay him like five hundred bucks to get the sheds, or if I killed the deer, he would end up giving me the shed because obviously he was chasing me too. Um. So you know, whatever. Cool. How far I, away was I that? Mean, probably. I mean, the way a bird flies, I'd say half a mile. So I mean, not 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 crazy far. Not crazy, but a little um, a little bit. Right. Yeah. And. uh so, you know, I was kind of bummed out. Then I'm like, oh, man, he's gone, you know? And then, uh, so I probably drove my wife crazy for the next couple months. Like, you know, I don't I don't even know what I'm doing this season. I don't even have a buck I'm chasing. <laughs> you know, I was just, you know, and then I was out scouting public nonstop, you know, dropping cameras off nonstop, just, you know, stressing. And uh, I think it was May. Yeah, May. And uh, May 5th, I got a picture of this deer giant bases and he already had split 
uh, he had split brows. And right then I knew, you know what I'm saying? There's no other deer that I could I could imagine that would be that big, and I just knew instantly, like, okay, that's him. Then I started looking at pictures, and I started looking at the patch on his throat and, the, and, and like, the white around his mouth, and I was like, okay, it's definitely him. And uh, from there, man, I just got pictures, like, every day. I think there was, like, two days during from that time until – the day before bow season, there's two days I didn't get a, a, a picture of him. I got a picture of him almost every single day. And I videoed him all summer. I mean, every single evening I was out sitting in the soybean field getting ate up with bugs, you know, just <laughs> videoing him, just getting the same footage I got the very same night before. But I was just, you know, I was out there watching him, and that's exactly what I wanted to do. And watching him transform into something giant, I, you know, I, I, I as me and you have talked, and we talked in our last uh uh, uh, podcast, I was just shifting cans all summer, just up and down. He was just the, the most nomadic deer I've ever seen in my entire life, but so smart, you know. He he was, like, all spring and summer, he was on a pattern where you could almost, like, I, I could, you could look at your watch and be like, what's he, what's he doing right now? And I could almost tell you. And then the day before bow season, man, it was just, he just, and it's kind of weird because the last picture I got him, he's staring right into the cam, and then he just disappears. <laughs> mm. You know, he's just gone. And uh, I saw him the second day of both season at like a hundred yards. And I think I, I think I actually texted you that. I think it was that evening. I'm like, okay, man, I saw him. I'm going in there tomorrow. And you know, I was pumped. I'm like, I got him. Well, little did I know, it'd be almost well a month. Yeah, a month and six days later before I see him again. <laughs> and uh, I, I got two trail cam pictures. I got a trail cam picture. So if you start season, I got a trail cam picture on October 5th. Um, and it was just is a that when you, picture of me. Is that when you move the blind in? No, so that's right before the blind okay. picture. So October 5th, I got a picture of him. Um, and then October 9th, it was at the blind. Man, that that blind brush in job, that was primo. Good job on that. Yeah. Bro. I don't know how long that yeah, took was, you, but I was like, that's just a pile of brush. <laughs> There's nothing in there. Honestly, man, I just kept cutting bushes and throwing them on top of the blind and, and make sure the blind wasn't like falling in. And then I, I, walked, I walked all the way in front of him and turned around like, dude, that's sick. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, now you like tucked it was, up in a down tree and then used the down tree. Like, I was like, damn, yeah. that's, that's good. Like half that wasn't what the only part that was planned was putting the blind in the dead tree. The rest of it just kind of happened. But uh, uh, but that spot on the ninth, what was kind of messed up about that is the Wednesday. And me and my buddy always go to the bar on Wednesday night. I mean, every single week, it's something that 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 me and him do. We go get pizza. We have you know a couple drinks, and that's that. Well. I was in there checking cans, and, you know, I was like, well, the wind's wrong anyways. It's, it's not a big deal. You know, I'll just go check cans, and I'll just go out, whatever. Well, he – I went to check cans. Well, one hour later, he, I got him on trail cam video coming into the scrape at the blind. Hit, he hit the scrape, and then he ate some he ate some corn, and then he kind of just walked off one hour after I was there. So then I didn't get a picture of him again until the 19th, and 19th, they were cutting soybeans. So he was bedded in an area where I thought he was going to be where, I mean, where he bedded all summer, basically. And I thought he was, I thought he was in there, which is about 20, 30 yards away from that, from that blind, honestly, like now looking at it. And now that I've killed him and walked in there, <laughs> it was actually really, really close. Uh, so they were cutting beans. Well, they pushed him up and I got him on a, on a camera leaving. And that was at 2.30 in the day. I think I sent you that picture, just like his head. Yeah. And uh, and I was like, all right, man, I got I got a picture of him. I know where he's at, which that is the spot that I did an all-day sit on the very first day of, of season. So, yeah, because you were getting him at, like, noon and one, early season, like hard horn right before season. You know, you are getting him, like, oh, yeah. all day. So, oh, those pictures, like, when those, those truck hand pictures, I got of him standing in the in the, in the creek with the, with the velvet just hanging off of him, was a week before bow season, it was like one thirty. Yeah. You know, and, but I mean, it was it was like that. I got pictures at 11, 30, 12, you know, I mean, I was obviously close to him, you know. Yeah, you were right there and, in his bedroom getting the pictures that time of day. Right. 
Well, I mean, so back to the uh, ninth, the nineteenth, uh, I think it was. That was the last picture that I got, and then from there, I didn't get a picture of him until I think November fifth. Yep, November fifth. I got I I got a picture of him. now. Me now in the meantime, I'm hunting my butt off. I'm hunting. I'm hunting. All, I mean, every edge that I possibly can. I know where he's at. There's there's a lot of standing corn this year. Um, it's been really, really wet. So I knew where he was at. And me and you have talked about this for hours. Like, dude, I know where he's at. He's, he's right here. He's right here. He's right here. Homie but, gets on to me all the time. I'm always like, I, what I tell you? I'm like, man, I wouldn't do it. Because <laughs> I'm like, yeah. at standing corn, he could be bedded anywhere. He could be bedded right, right on the edge of the timber, and you're trying to access – where you believe he's at, and he's eighty yards down went or down from where you think, and then you bump him. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so like every so like every time I talk myself into like going in there, you were the person that I would call or text, and you'd be like, I don't know, man. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> the. It's like, all right, I, I, I won't. So that's the same just, answer so, I always get from. I don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's risky. <laughs> Which obviously worked. I mean, I mean, who knows? I could have went in there and killed him earlier, but I'm glad I did. You know, it's and but you know, so the whole this, I'm hunting, you know, as much as I possibly can. I'm hunting every single edge. I'm not hunting the same stand too much. You know, you. I mean, I'm texting you almost daily, like, hey, man, the wind's this. I'm sending you pictures of maps and stuff, like, you know, and I'm just. Yeah, I'm, I'm hunting the deer, time. too, pretty much. I'm like, all right, this yeah. is the night. We got him. <laughs> so by about this time, it's October 20th, you know, and I feel like I'm running out of time, you know. <laughs> you know, I feel like, oh, I man, felt the same way. Over. Yeah. And, you know, I'm freaking out. And, and you know, Preston and Jack and all them, they're probably all like, you know, this dude just losing his fucking mind. You know? <laughs> he's not, he's, he's not, he's not doing, he's not doing well. <laughs> you know? And, uh. Well, and and me and you have also talked that the landowners start building ponds. Um, I had a, they start working on the uh, on the uh, on on the road, so I had a lot of like traffic from that. You know, it was just like chaos this year. You know, um, so this deer obviously changes pattern a whole lot. You know, there's a lot of a lot of pressure, and. At this time, man, I'm I'm questioning myself. Like the, all them thoughts that I had all spring and summer, like you don't deserve this deer. This this you 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 know you're 27 years old. This isn't this isn't your time, you know. And you know all them thoughts. I'm like, well, you. Uh, and then you know I'm sitting there at nighttime, just looking at all my deer with just one lamp on over in the corner, just like, yep, you were definitely right. You suck, you know. <laughs> like every every single night i told know? homie the same thing like i told i told i don't know who it was but it steve potts i was like i stole oh stole yeah sorry <laughs> steve stoltz i was like was not not smart enough not on I the th- level i think it was heath oh it was heath yeah i was yeah. like i'm not on the level of hunting mature deer yet to be able to kill this deer and we both said it me and yeah. homie yeah. both we were like we can't figure him out but i know you're about to yeah. get in the story of how you Fin- you you seal the deal, but we got a couple questions here that we want to ask. If it's cool with you, oh yeah, for sure. For okay, sure. all right. So, uh, from from year to year, from your trail cam picks, did was he frequenting the same area around the same time? Because you know how people yeah. say, like you know, <clears throat> if, if he was there last year, he's going to be there again within three or four days. Oh yeah, for sure. So that picture. You, so you know the picture I sent you of what he was last year and what he is this year. Yeah. So that was to the day in the exact same the exact same spot. Hmm. Wow. So he so he did exactly what he did last year. Now, to a certain point and to a certain time period, when it came to October, and well, really, so as you've seen in pictures, he didn't shed his velvet until kind of kind of late. And, uh, which, I mean, it's probably pretty hard for him to, to shed some, you know, some of his brother, but he, he's not a real aggressive deer. He never has been. So, but what, what changed him this year is all the standing crop. So about October, what he would normally do is stay here until about October 15th and then he would just leave. And then he'd come back about January. So 
I mean, you might get a picture of him once in November, you know, chasing, or, you know, once in December, you might see him, or, you know, but it wasn't, he wasn't here, you know. And, but this year, with, with it being wet, and as much standing corn as there is, I mean, I bet within two miles of my house, there's probably 3,000 acres of corn standing. I mean, it's, it, there's a lot of crop standing this year, so... It's really changed things, really. It, it's been holding deer in areas that it normally wouldn't hold as many deer or wouldn't hold the caliber of deer. It's holding them because they're, they're, they have everything. They have food, water, does, everything is all right there. You know, so what they had to do last year, they don't have to do right now. So it's kind of it's kind of like an oddball year, really. So, so I, I mean, my second question was, was, does his home range shrink as he got older? But, I mean, if he had all that corn... And that question's well, this, kind of, I mean, you really can't answer it because it's, you can and can't because, it, it, like you said, you had all the corn, plus then you had right. all the exposure from the landowners that you normally don't have changing its patterns right. up, so. Well, honestly, I mean, I honest, the deer I killed last year was a real dominant deer, and he was, he was one of the older deer here. And I, I feel like, I feel like Papa just kind of took his spot, but he wasn't real aggressive, but I didn't feel like he had to be. Like, when he walked in, nobody was even messing with like, you know, yeah. he just kind of, he just kind of took that presence on, you know, so he kind of took a role. So like the, the deer I shot last year was like this, like his home range was real small. Like, and I, and pretty much I killed Papa within 30 yards of where I shot the deer last year. So yeah. big bucks, I like big like, bucks in places, you know what yeah. I mean? Right, so. exactly. So I feel like he, it's kind of like he just kind of like took over all of all of. I've heard that. All of his I've heard of that when you take a buck out, you know, another one's gonna move right in. And I was hoping that would happen with my bedding area <laughs> from last year, but I mean, there was bucks there, but there wasn't one like there early. Yeah. But, Besides well, I mean, runner and, up and, ten, but then he was just like, oh, "See ya." <laughs> and and sometimes I feel like it's not, you know, it doesn't happen, you know, immediately. But if if you know if that's a spot that attracts a big buck, eventually it's gonna attract another one. You know, so yeah. it's, I mean, I feel like that, but yeah, his, his home range this year wasn't that big. He was just smart. You know, he didn't, he didn't have where, where he was, half of where he was, I didn't have access to. So, you know, who knows what he was doing over, over, over there? You know, he could have been on camera all day over there, but I know on my side, he, you know, once that velvet came off, he kind of, you know, he kind of almost knew. <laughs> you know, it's almost like he was like, all right. And he kind of just went and went and hit because I was telling you all this sign was, was, was here. I was sending you pictures of, it, you know, and it, and it was just appearing every single night. There's giant rubs showing up, giant scrapes showing up. And I'm like, and trees that were just tore to hell. And I'm like, dude, this has to be here. It has to be, you know, and then what, and then what got him on the fifth really is I put a camera on both sides of this tree, facing both sides. And the front cam never n- never got him until like 10, 15 minutes after the first cam got him. So they're on the same tree facing opposite ways, 15 minutes apart, I got, I got pictures of him. So what he was doing, you know, in, in the middle of that 12-inch tree, I <laughs> I don't really know, but he, you know, he probably went, went, went and hit scrapes or, you know, any, any, anything. So I don't know if he just got hit to a couple of things and he just went and went and hid, which is very possible. You know, I'm not saying that I didn't, you know, I probably made a, you know, a small hiccup here and there. Who knows? But for some reason, man, he, he knew something was up or he just was smart enough to just disappear. But as far as his home range goes all summer, it wasn't that, that big. I think I told you it was like three to 400 yards maybe. I mean, he didn't move much. And he didn't really have to. And then I think what – I think – and then you remember right there uh, in September, he kind of disappeared. Had, he, he went on that like little like two-week stunt, and he was like right at the end there. He kind of disappeared. I think what he was doing then is he was kind of finding his area. You know, he was finding that area where he could go and kind of and, and kind of hide. You know, Velvet rut. Yeah, you know he <laughs> he just you know it's 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 like it's like he knew and you know who knows I mean who knows but it proceeded man and I, I caught a glimpse of him on uh, November fourteenth I think it was actually in the spot that I ended up killing him 
but I was farther up and I was, uh, I, he come out of the corner of that field and he was at like 85 yards and he was walking. He literally walked the same path that I, that I actually shot him on. And, you know, he, that was the second, that was the second sighting all season. And the second sighting, I tell you, he probably, in my mind, he grew about 75 inches <laughs> because all that, all that hunting and all that freezing cold yeah. and all that work, and it's just packing camera gear in and out every single trip and climbing sticks and you know, just sit after sit after sit, and then seeing him like that, it was just like, oh man, and then, and then it was just like that very first day, man, I was just lit up again, you know, I was I was just ready. So I got that drive again, you know, and I'm hunting, 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 and I didn't get a single picture after that. Or see him until the very moment that I killed him. Yeah, that's what me and homie. Him. That's what me and homie were saying was, it, we realized that even though we weren't getting pictures of Mister Freeze all the time, we were a lot closer to him than we knew, and we were almost 100%. banking on them cam pics more than what we were like, what we were feeling like. Okay, he's here, but I think he was there a lot more than we thought. Mm-hmm. You know. So just well, our- see, that's something that that's something that I he, this deer this deer humbled me in a way that you know it, you know I, I, and me and you've talked about this you never stop learning and something that I've and something that I've used as a, as as a tactic and we've talked about is I use a deer sense against him and I became a creature of habit almost to to that I you know I I, I banked on you know I became comfortable with him all summer doing doing exactly what I wanted him to do that. You know, I became a creature of habit. I didn't, ex- I didn't allow myself to expect him to change it up. You know, and, and you have to understand that that's that's going to happen. And really, he was right there the whole time. I guarantee, I was within a hundred yards of that of, of that buck hunting at least probably ten times. I guarantee it. But it's like I was just a little bit off. You know. Or, or he, he just, you know, and he's, and, and you've seen it a hundred times how, you know, in, in early bow season, how these, how these bucks walk in, it'll take them 40 minutes to walk, you know, 80, 80, 90, a hundred yards. You know, they're just real pokey bucks, you know? So. They don't work on don't a clock look. like we do. They ain't got nothing no, to do. No. <laughs> they just out there they, cruising. The only thing that they have to do is survive. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's just, but going back to what, what, what you said. I was closer to him that whole time than I ever thought I, that I that I even was. And what's crazy is I think when he wasn't on camera, I was closer to him than I was when he was on camera. Because when he wasn't on camera, I was not even hunting those spots. I was going off and hunting the other, other spots. Come to find out, that's where he was actually. What's funny, the day I killed him, I walked into the area he was, which is like this big gall, you know, and they're just big, they're just big trees. And they're standing corn down there, and I walked in down in there, and I set a camp. And part of me thinks that he he watched me walk down in, into that gully because I walked down, set the camp, turned around, walked out on the same path. When I walked out of it, I circled all the way around the farm and got out on the very head of that gully, and and sat and and actually sat there. And I think he saw me walk in that one side of that gully and walk back out. When he got up to get up that that evening, he headed out the opposite way. Yeah, very well could have. I know that yeah, we've but, seen it up here with, like, bucks that are laying down in the grass. I'll be, like, 50 yards from them, and they'll just be like, I'm not getting up until they really feel like they've been spotted, you know. And then I had it this year where, like, that eight-pointer that me and Jake seen, they can stand so still that you're looking at a deer, and you're like, mm-hmm. where where the hell did he go? Right. You know I mean, you're oh, looking right yeah. at him, and then you're like, all right, yep. where did he, where is he at? <laughs> you look away for one second, you know, you're like, all right, you hear something over here, you look back, you're like, deer's gone, and then you look again, you're like, oh, no, it's right there. It's just insane how well they blend in. But what, What's yep. your question, homie? You had one. Yeah, I was just going to ask, you know, you seen this deer the first time when he was two and a half, and, I mean, you know you got a general idea of where he's at now. Um, how far or how much did this deer grow from year to year? So when he was two and a half, I would say he was probably a hundred inch deer, but he was a, a 11 pointer, which was kind of impressive. <laughs> and, uh, 
he, I didn't see him in 2016. So at three and a half, I can't tell you. Okay. At four, at four and a half, whenever I passed him, he was probably 155 to 160. And then this year, he's, we'll say, I don't know, we'll, we'll say 185 to 195. Is actually what he what he what he what he is right now. He he gets scored on the sixteenth of, of of this month. Yeah, I'm excited to see what it is, man. He's a giant no matter what. I was saying, I mean, he but made, he's got. You won't ever shoot one with that many bases kickers again. No, I don't think. there's no oh, way, no, dude. I mean, he's got he's got twenty four points. He's got um, he's got more points from the brow tines down than any of my other bucks have on their entire head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's insane, so, man. And then that one, I mean, what was the, what was your, I mean, I know you roughed him. What was your mass measurement on that right side? Uh, on well, the it's base? kind of weird. So it's kind of weird. Like, it, he didn't give me any justice on base. Like, he wanted to grow the most outrageous bases, but he has, like, the most perfect rings right in, in between these points. And his bases are only six and a, six and a quarter. Yeah. Just right in Which, between I mean, there. I'd say only, but that's... Yeah, I think I mean, that's, that's what, what Mr. Yeah. Freeze was right at six, yeah. six and six, a quarter. Yeah. So that's still a giant base, man. I mean, that's big. Oh, but for sure, for sure. But, like, his base is, like... When you, you look at him, it looks like 10 inches, 9 inches, right. you know what I mean? It, it looks if, ridiculous. If you, go, if, if you go half inch above that, he would have, like, 8-inch base. Yeah, I know. that The smallest the smallest point gets you all the time, man. Yeah. So... But, uh... He, so... Like I said, I didn't get no pictures of him. I bow hunted, you know, I mean, you know, man, I bow hunted almost every single day. And finally, gun season rolled around. Well, before then, before we get to gun season, shout out to you because I got that call from you. And I was, I mean, I felt like I shot my deer. And you were like, I shot, well, first of all, I saw the picture and I texted you and then you didn't text me for like two hours. And I'm like, dude, what the hell? <laughs> like, this dude just said, he shot a big buck, and he don't text me back. I'm like, all right, cool. All right, man. <laughs> and then finally he texts me, like, all right, man, I'm sorry. He was like, I shot him. I'm like, so we was pumped for that, you know, and, I, man, I was jazzed for you. And then, I was, then that kind of gave me a little bit of drive. I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> so. I yeah, we were talking. We were running. like, man, it would be insane if we both shot these bucks. You know what I mean? Like, right. we're I don't know how many miles we're away, a long ways, but – you meet through a podcast and then you grow a connection and then I'm hunting your deer and you're hunting my deer. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you're just miles away. Yeah. I'm game playing with right. you. Like, this is what I'm thinking about doing, you know? And you're like, yeah. Right. And uh, you're, you know, you're sending me, you, your game plans were much more elaborate. I give you time. You must've <laughs> spent like, you were like, this is the wind. And you're, I mean, it was like a color coordinated, I mean, pie graph. <laughs> it was solid. <laughs> I mean, I'm, when it when it comes to to a deer, I mean, I'm I'm very nerdish. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I get I get I get very much like into it. But I do that because like some people you try to explain this stuff to, and they're like, I don't I don't even get what you're what you're saying. So it's like, all right, well, I'm gonna break it down. Yeah. But uh, no, man. So like, we, so you shot yours, and, you know, and 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 then it seemed like everybody I knew, and. And every social media outlet, every friend I knew, everybody shot giant bucks within like a two week period. And it was just like, so I'm sitting there just like, man, what the what the hell? Like, what am I doing wrong? You know? And you every time you get on you get on Facebook or Instagram, everybody's got giant bucks, and you're like, you know what what the, you know? It's not it's not really about killing giant bucks, but it's like you know I put in a lot of work, and I just want to hold my deer. I just want to hold him and smile. You know? Yeah, <laughs> like, for sure. I feel you. I feel yeah. I told like, homie, I said, uh, man, what am I doing wrong? You know, or what are we doing wrong? And then homie got on a buck, and I was like, all right, all right. So at least someone got it done, you know. And then right. I was I was jacked for that, and I was like, well, you know, I I told homie at the th beginning of this season, you know, I'm like, there's got to come a point where you just can't get it done, you know. There's got to be, and I was yeah. prepared for that this season. I was like, this is, I'm prepared for just not getting it done. And I thought, hell, I ain't, I haven't even shot a doe yet, man. I haven't even shot yeah. a doe yet. I'm like, I'm just gonna pass does, and I'll wait. Well, what was and then to me is that that deer I sent you a picture of that somebody actually shot. I passed that deer this year at like 12 yards, and he was like, you know, a high 50s deer probably. And I passed another deer that was, you know, probably a 145. So 
it's not, you know, I was hunting and I was passing deer. So at this point, you know, it's, it's, it's gun season. I'm like, man, why did I pass those deer? You know, like I haven't got a trail cam picture of this buck. He's probably gone or he's probably got hit by a car or somebody poached him. I'm like, man, this is ridiculous. You know, so going into, uh, going into gun season, I was like, you know, the first good deer that walks by me, I'm putting him down. I just want to, you know, I just want to enjoy it. You know, I, I want to get back to enjoying the rest of my year, <laughs> you know, cause I was just, I was just down, you know? And, uh, so I hunted all day Monday, which was horrible weather. It yeah. Really, props like, to you, like, man. That I, I can, I seen people messaging or posting on social media about how shitty it was. I was like, dang, it was yeah. like 40 mile an hour winds. And yeah, I mean, it was free. It was freezing cold. I was out in it all day, whatever. So I saw, I mean, and it wasn't bad because I was seeing deer, you know, so if, if, if you're seeing deer, you're not, you're not freezing cold, you know, you're, you're at least, you know, somewhat in, enjoying your day. So I saw deer Monday, saw deer Tuesday, Wednesday comes, and I'm actually going to go hunt this, hunt this big, this big blind setup. Well, an hour before I head out, the farmer comes out there and starts spreading this hay all over the field. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me, man. I'm like it's freezing cold, snow, and I was gonna, I was gonna go sit in this blind and be lazy and kick on this heater, you know, <laughs> just enjoy. It. Yeah. Well, I was like, all right. Well, he's over there, which it probably wouldn't affect it a whole lot, but I was like, he's over there doing that, so I'm just gonna go back there. I was like, I'm packing me four or five Mountain Dews. I'm grabbing the whole the whole snack tray, dumping it into my book bag. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to sit in this spot where I know I've seen him, and I'm going to sit here all eating and I'm going to eat and I'm going to drink my pot and I'm going to enjoy myself. You know, and I, I went back there and I, you know, I, I, I opened up a snack, you know, and I'm, I'm set up. I didn't bring my harness. So I didn't get up in my, in my stand. Um, so I sat up on the, on, on this ground. There's this big dead, this big dead stump. And I can sit right down in a pervert. I mean, you can't, you can't even see me. And I got, I got my camera arm set up right, right there beside me, you know, and I'm all tucked in, you know, and, and, uh, way up on this big creek, on, on this big creek, uh, uh, creek thing. Actually, if you go on our YouTube video, it's almost the exact same spot I shot my doe. Um, it's, it's right there. And you can, you know, I'm on this big creek bank. I see all down in this creek and they're standing corn down there. And so this is where I think he's, he's bedded his way up in the standing corner. So, you know, I'm just, you know, I figure if he's coming out, he's going to come out on, on, on this side or he's going to come out on that, on, on that other side. I know I walked down on that other side earlier. So I was like, well, maybe he'll come out on, on this side. So I set up whatever, you know, I opened me up a snack, eat it, you know, and I'm texting, I think I might text you about something. What snack are we talking about? What do you got? Oh man, I'm talking like greasy cups. I'm talking. Oh, so really, what what it is is a bunch of leftover hot like Halloween candy that my wife keeps premium stuff. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I got a bar, so she just keeps filling this tray up of Halloween candy. So I basically grabbed the tray and just opened my book bag and dumped it in there. Nice threw little my sampler ozonics. bag. Love that. Yeah, threw my Ozonics and my camera on top of it, zipped it up, and was gone. <laughs> and. uh as a matter of fact, later that night, she said, did you really eat all this candy? I'm like, well, there's like two pieces left. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> no. You can yeah. have a long time off Sour Patch Kids and water. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, so, you know, I'm sitting there, and I'm, I think I texted you about some, some hunting stuff. I texted my buddy, and we're, we're sending shed, all these shed pictures, and he's like, I can't wait for shed season. And by this point, man, it's, it's you know, it's after rut, and I'm like, yeah. Yeah, you start thinking wait. about, like, where are they going to shed at, you know? <laughs> Yeah, like, you know, I'm like, yeah, I, I like, you know, I'm starting to almost accept it. You know, you know, that I'm not going to kill this dude. And I'm talking to a couple of buddies, you know, texting back and forth. You know, I'm staying, I'm staying alert. I'm staying on top of stuff. I know, I know everything that's going on. And, uh, about five o'clock rolls, rolls around. Like, and I see this body coming out oh, and, and there's snow and there's, it's, it snowed, uh, all Monday, all Tuesday. So we got about two inches of snow. So, uh. You know, I wasn't real worried about my like, man. If a deer walks in, I'm seeing it. You know, from a ways, a ways off. I'm way up on this creek bank. I'm not worried about that. Well, I see this movement coming. You know, I, I see this body. I'm like, all right, that's a decent sized body. Well, all of a sudden, it looks like this giant bush just moved. And I'm like, wait a minute. And he kind of ducked his head and, and 
and took that big, you know, you know how them bucks kind of take that big swoop and step with their head. And he took that big step and I was like, Oh shit. You know? And I was like, here he is. And then instantly it was like fireworks went off and I was like, you have a gun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I was like, it's gun season. And lo and behold, here, here it is. Here it's gun season. I both hunted my butt off and he's standing at 40 yards. So he's standing there 40 yards and I, I get, I grab the camera. I put, I, I get it on him. I make sure he's in frame. And as soon as I see that he's in frame, boom, I drop it. Well, I, I hit kind of, kind of high. And, uh, because he was kind of stepping down this, down this creek bank and I never stopped him before I shot and I shot and, he, and I kind of hit him a little bit high and he dropped. Well, he dropped and, you know, he started kicking and well, instantly I just, I mean, I don't really make a noise a whole lot. I just kind of like, Lay the, uh, well, Anthony, I, I, I racked the gun, and I just put this new scope mount on 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 this gun. Well, I racked the gun, I just kind of lay the lay, lay the gun down, and I'm just like, did this just happen? You know? And and he's down there, and he's kind of kicking. Well, I'm, I look down, and I kind of look up, and next thing I know, he's standing on the bank looking at. Me. And I'm like, oh shit! And I go to pick the gun up, and I realize for some reason this new scope mount I put on it didn't. It, when I when I racked the gun, it didn't put a new shell. And I'm sitting there messing with this gun, and you can hear all this on video. And this, it will not wrap the shell, man. And I'm looking at him, and every time I look up at him, I'm like, what are you doing, you dumbass? And I'm sitting here working <laughs> on this gun. And I'm just looking up at this deer, and I'm shaking and shaking. And instantly, I just remember, I reach in my vest pocket. I jam a shell in the gun. I close the chamber. I put it up. Boom, right there behind the shoulder, smacking. He takes off running. I mean, he was dead on the first shot. I think he was just, you know, because he was sitting there wobbling and, you know, he was done. But in, in my eyes, he was back on his feet. You know, I was like, oh, no. Yeah, you got to double tap him, man, if you're not yeah. sure. Oh, so, so, <laughs> you know, I, I, I went ahead and, and you know, I got that ordeal. And you can hear all this on cam. I got all that figured out. Well, you know, and then it's just silence. Because I'm sitting there at the base of the tree and I don't know what to do. I didn't see him go down. It's just silence. Then you 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 hear me call my call my uh, call my uh, wife. She's like, "Hello," and I'm calm as could be, man. I'm like, "Hey, babe." I was like, "I just shot Papa." She like, and then she she loses it, and I'm talking to her calm, and then finally it just hits me, man. It hits me what what just happened. The deer that I spent thousands of hours, you know, looking at maps and show cam pictures and obsessing over. It. I mean, every family function was about taught was talking about Papa. I mean, my dad doesn't hunt, but he tried his butt off and would, would sit there and, like, talk to me about this deer. Everybody was talking about this deer, man. And it was all wrapped up in one, and you can hear it right there. I'm talking to her, and I'm calm as could be, and all of a sudden you just hear me lose it. And it sounds like a 13-year-old girl just got freaking Bieber tickets. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, lose, I lose my shit, man. And, you know, and, I, and, I'm, and she's like, calm down, calm down, and, you know, and I'm starting to cry, and I'm like, all right, shh. I got to be quiet. <laughs> I'm like, I, I was like, I got to go. And I, I kind of hang up with with her. And then I, I, I end up calling, I think I, I call I try to call you like two other people. And like, everybody was like, Oh man, you busting me down. He's down. He's down. And I, I called Preston and he didn't answer. Well, he called me back and I was like, all right, man, I shot. I, I broke down the whole thing to him. I was like, he ran off with his tail down. He was like, Oh man, you might have got shot him. I'm like, what the fuck did you say? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, did you just put that in my mind that I just did that? I'm like, I'm, 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 like, I'm on cloud nine. I'm like, dude, there's no way. I'm like, dude, there's no way. I'm like, he's 40 yards. There's no way I made a bad shot. You know, so I'm stressing, stressing. Uh, my uh, my best friend Nate, who's helped me drag out almost every single deer that I've shot in the past three or four years. He he came over. He was sick of the dog. He showed up with toilet paper shoved in his nose and his ears and stuff. He was so sick. Solid dude. He was, like, <laughs> he was like he was like, come on, man. I'm like, well, let's let's wait, man. And I, I had my father in law coming. I had my brother in law coming to film. So to film, we find him, and so they all show up. And it's about an hour and a half after I shoot him. I'm walking back to the house. I think I I think I've called you, and and you know me and you were pumped. I I think when I called you, I was I was I was I was crying. Yeah, I mean, the first I, time you were, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the first time I, you're like, you're like, I just shot him, and then you told me, you no, know, he got down, he got back up, 
second one felt real good. I'm like, oh, you got him, man. I'm like, just give him, I, that guy always said, I'm just like, just give him some time. <laughs> give him 97 hours. <laughs> give him some time and then uh, go in there and, and get your hands on him. And uh, you're like, yeah, I'm, I think you were back at the house, maybe. You're like, yeah, I'm back at the house. And yeah. the second time you called me, you know, you're like, I'm back at the house. And I was like, all right, you know, and then I was like, are you going out tonight? You know, what's the deal? And then, then I get the pick of just the bases. I'm like, oh, yeah, he got him. <laughs> Yeah. Well, see, so we we end up. So my father-in-law comes, and my brother-in-law comes, and my and my and my buddy comes. Well, my wife and mother-in-law just start cooking. So I'm like, all right. Well, I was like, I got everybody here. I was like, please tell me that this that this deer is dead. I was like, I don't. I was like, and by this time, I posted on my on my on my uh, on my Instagram story, and there's been a few. You know, there's quite a few people following the story ever since it started. Cause I, I used to post pictures of him and stuff. Cause I mean, whenever I, I was first hunting him and stuff, uh, back in back last year and all that. And, uh, so like in the meantime with me shooting him and getting back to the house, I, I had like 85 messages and that's no lie between like Instagram and my phone and people calling me. And so I was just trying to, you know, it's kind of hard to focus on that. You just shot the deer of your lifetime and you can't even focus. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. it's like everything's going crazy. Everybody's trying to call you this, this, and that. And then, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm waiting on everybody and it just hits me, man. You know what I'm saying? And I, 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 I just lose it. I'm sitting there looking at all my deer and I just, I just lose it. So anyways, the following along, everybody shows up. We all, we all go out there. We go out tracking, man. And where I shot him first and he dropped and ran up on the bank, zero blood, zero blood. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, well, surely I didn't just knock him out. <laughs> I was like, he, I had to hit, you know, and there's no, there's no blood, no blood, no blood. Went up to where I shot him the second time. There's a little bit of blood. Okay, cool. A little bit of blood, blood, a little bit of blood. Well, I look up and the corn stalk is fucking busted. Bad. Blood everywhere. Everywhere. And I'm like, oh man. Then you can just see a tunnel where he just ran through. I'm like, and you know, and and it's kind of funny because my because my brother in law's filming it. And about that time when I see that, he kind of gets me in frame. And you just see me pick up speed, and I start walking through this corn, and I just see those, I just see hooves, and I turn around and I jump up and down. I was like, it's Papa's pride, and I'm screaming, and I go up to him, man, and I literally sound like. Like Chris Farley got shot in like one lung. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Like, it, it. like you just hear me like, <sighs> and I'm just sitting here holding him on my like, Papa's pride is in the house. You know, I'm just, I'm losing it, man. And uh, I don't cry right on film, but and but like right when right when I I like kind of lay his head down, and I stand up, and you can just hear me losing. And then like my uh my uh. uh my brother-in-law just kind of shuts it off. I'm like, man, I was like, you should have just showed it. I was like, who cares? But uh, he shuts it off. But now I'm telling you, man, every since I was a little boy, my entire life I've been killing a giant ten point with with you know good brows with a bunch of junk, and I did it, man. <laughs> you know, so that that moment was everything to me. Like. If you, you could you, you could come to me with a winning lottery ticket and say I'd trade you for that deer and I I wouldn't trade you. Never. I mean never even think about it. You know, so uh and I, and it's kinda cool of, because of the uh the yeah, video captures all that, man. It really captures like you don't like I I I'm not a real serious guy most of the time, but like I don't really, you know, show a whole lot of uh you know, I'm, I don't show a lot of happiness, sadness, or nothing like that. But in that video, man, you just see me just lose it. You know, like I didn't know what to do, whether cry, laugh, smile, hunting. <laughs> like I didn't know what to do, man. Yeah. I, mean, I fought tooth and nail for this thing. I mean, everything. I poured all my all my money and time and everything into into that moment. And when you're sitting there holding holding that moment, it's like. It's so weird of a feeling you can't, you don't even know what to feel really, you know? Yeah, but, it's something I um, hope everybody gets to, you know, whether it's like, oh, you know, if a 130 is the biggest deer you ever shot, it's the same, you know, you're like, you get to feel that feeling, man. I just hope everybody that's out there hunting gets to feel that, you know, because it's, it's something that like, you're like, you're like already, 
Like I put a text message that's like out last night. I'm like, 2019 ruts almost here, boys. We need to get ready. <laughs> I know. You know like, what I mean? So, see, I mean, I'm I'm seriously running. I, and what's weird is I, this is the first time in quite a few years I'm going into the next season without any any target bucks really. So, yeah. uh, but I've already got cams out. I'm already you know I picked up a, a farm that I used to hunt when I was a kid. And nobody's hunted since. So uh, nice. I picked up this I picked up this this new farm and uh, I'm gonna set cams out on it and get all ready for next year. But man, everybody, and I'm sure you've got this question a hundred thousand times. Everybody's like, "What's next?" And it's like, "What's next for me is I'm just gonna keep deer hunting." And the first deer that gets my attention, I'm gonna become obsessed with him and I'm gonna hunt him until until he's dead. Yeah, that's yeah. what everybody what asks you? me. You know, well, well, we're just gonna sell all your stuff. I'm like. What are you talking about? You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. I keep telling everybody, people ask me, well, what's next? We're a double buck state. So the next mature buck that walks out with a bow, it's going to be in trouble. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I haven't shot, yeah. um, you know, I know there's stages of deer hunting, you know, and and I'm at the mature, shooting a mature buck stage. So it's not going it, to, it's not going to change the person I am or the way I hunt. I'm still going to do the exact same thing. I'm still obsessive and I'm already obsessed of other deer, you know, like I got a buck you've seen pics of him. He's got the same genetics. This buck does, you know, he's yeah. a two year old he's a stud. And I told homie, I said, we got to pass him. He was daylighting. I'm like, I'm not even, not even thinking about it. He's in the mid one thirties, probably maybe one forty as a two year old. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's a great deer, but he's just like, People are like, what are you going to do? Well, like you said, I'm going to find another buck, and I'm going to hunt him. And I'm going to shoot whatever mature buck comes in front of me before that, you know. Being a two-buck state, I've always been shoot a, a nice buck with a bow and then wait for a giant. You know, a lot of people yeah. were, if I can shoot two 150s in a year, I'm going to do it. But that's never been me. I, I, I was always chasing, you know, this qual this caliber of deer, you know. And now that I've done it, if there's an if there's two one fifties, I'm not gonna shoot them. I'm still chasing another one. You know, I hope right. I got you know at least forty fifty or more years of hunting, and you always want to shoot a bigger deer, right? I mean, you did this, I mean, but I mean, I'm still chasing it, the two hundred, right? I mean, <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, and it and it's like this. It, and I don't mean to come off in a bad way, but I'm you know I'm twenty seven, and and if I can if I can kill a deer like this at twenty seven. It's almost like I'm looking forward to the to what I can do at 37, 47, you know, and, and 57. And the reason that I'm looking forward to that is because the amount of work that I put into it, this is what I expect. I don't expect to kill 200 inches a year, but I expect to be successful. And when I am successful, it's, you know, people's like, oh, you know, maybe I'll be, I'll be, you know, I mean, you start about this. Maybe I'll be, I'll be lucky one day. Yeah, luck has a lot to do with a lot of things, and it does help. But knowing where this deer is, putting the work in, hanging the stand, making sure, I mean, it, it's all about being in that right place at the right time. Yeah, but you're in that right place at the right time because you did your homework and you made sure that you knew that, that that was the right place, you know? And you hunted them all that time and didn't bump them off your property. Right. That's you key, know, man. And, and everybody that, you know, everybody wants to chalk it up to luck, luck, luck. Me and you both hunt pressured land, and pulling off a deer like this wasn't easy, and I may never do it again, but it doesn't stop me from trying. And if and obviously you can't hunt what's what's you know what's what's not there. But if next year I the biggest year that I have on camera is 159 inches, well then you best believe I'm gonna kill me 159 inch deer. Yeah, you know confidence is key, man. I tell everybody that if you're not confident, you can't get it done because you're gonna be sitting well, there and you're gonna be like. Well, no, I'm, you know, nothing's going to happen, so I'm just going to get down, or you know, I'm not going to go out this morning because it's it's not on fire, or, you know. Well, and it's not, and it's not just a common thing. It's just that you have to be. It's when it goes back to what's next. Well, what's next is whatever's, you know, you know, whatever's there that I actually like, you know. Yeah. Me and you, every, everybody's hunted a long time, and finding deer this caliber is not not easy, and you know, by any. Means. So. To say, oh yeah, I'll do it next year. And next year, like, you don't. You, none of us know that, you know. No. But to say it's that, you know, 
Yeah, but to say that we have standard or you have a standard of a deer that you want to kill, that's that's perfectly fine, you know. And it, there's there's nothing wrong with that. And there's guys that you know would shoot a deer like this and wouldn't shoot another deer for ten years, you know. And See, I don't I don't I don't get that. I'm more I'm I deer hunt because I like deer hunt. Yeah, if there wasn't a <laughs> chance of failure, it wouldn't be no fun. Because like failures, right. what you're trying not to happen. You don't want to fail. Mm-hmm. That's the only reason I'm out there. Is like it's a. I love deer hunting, but it's like a personal thing to me. Which that people get weird when I say that. <laughs> but it's like, I, if if I don't kill a deer, right? I failed myself. I didn't fail anybody else. I failed myself. Yeah. That's that's yeah, what like, I want to do. That's my goal. You know, and I set some insane goals, and you did too this year. I mean, you set we set insane goals. But if you don't have goals for one, you don't have the confidence that you're going to get to those goals then it's never going to happen. So it's like some people, well, I ain't got no big deer on my property. Well, what's the biggest deer you got? You got a six-pointer that, that's an eight that don't have no brows. Chase that six-pointer until you get it done and feel and then, accomplished when you get it done. And then ask yourself, okay, if I don't have, if my biggest deer is a six-pointer now, what can I do for next year? What yep. can I do for the can year? Can you find that? new ground? Can you scope out right. new public? So, can you plant a food plot, draw more deer in? Can you... Create yep. a bedding area. You know, me and homie, we're already game planning and talking about, you know, you know, this is what we're going to do next year to make it better. We had a killer deer this year. I mean, you got a buck, a mature buck down with a bow. Mm-hmm. I got one of the biggest deer I probably shoot forever or for a very long time, you know, and the season's not over in my eyes, so we got time. We can go get another one. And that goes back to the confidence piece. If you can't, if you can't, if you don't think you can get it done, you might as well stay home because you're not yeah. going to be focused when you're out there. You're not going to be prepared to sit as long as you need to sit, you know. A guy asked me, I mean, you know, well, how do you kill big deer? And I was like, well, I can't answer that, but I can tell you that it takes time and effort. You know, a lot of people, well, and then there's always a question. He was like, well, what about money? You know, and this was from a young guy, too. And I was like, yeah. well, I was like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, if you're going to outfitters and stuff, maybe, but time letting deer grow and just pure not knowing how to quit that that's what kills big what do you think homie what do you think kills big yeah, deer uh, exactly what you just said yeah and being I mean, smart putting, putting, yeah putting the time in is where the confidence comes from and and you know you you watch all these guys on uh on um like youtube and all these guys that are going out on all this public land and all this stuff they're killing deer because they're confident, you know, because they've done the scouting they, and they know that there's deer in there. They're, they're going in the spots that normal guys would pull up to that, you know, would have a mindset, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hunt this spot. They'd pull up to that spot and be like, eh, that's kind of far back. I don't want to push deer. I'm going to go to this other spot. The, what these guys are doing that are killing deer, they're like, no, we're going in, we're pushing in, we're killing these deer. you got to have that same mindset, you know, and, and, and it's, not necessarily pushing in on deer, but you got to have the one. You got to have to. If you want to kill a 190 inch deer, you got you got to put yourself in the position to kill a 190 inch deer. Whether that be passing deer on pressured land that you don't know is ever going to make it, and you know all summer long you're doing everything right, or you're knocking on doors and dropping trail cameras and whether I mean okay, you can go knock on a door and if if, if you're allowed to hunt this property, you go drop cams and there's not a deer that you that you want there cool leave cams but don't waste your time there you know leave it, and it's all about if you want it, you, it it's out there you can't find it i mean I, I mean for instance this state alone this year there's been more 200 deer killed than i've ever seen in my life you know yeah well, and, i was and on people, fire right now yeah and, some- and people want to chalk that up to you know a whole lot of things but really and then people want to say that our our, our numbers are down and a lot more people are waiting for a lot bigger bucks and passing on a lot more little bucks, and this is the result of it, you know. And and I really think that has a lot to do with it. Whether that be the driving force of television doing that, social media, whatever's doing that, but that I really think that's what's happening. So the the and what I've noticed is our, the chances of you killing a mega buck it just get better every single year. I mean, there's deer that are being killed that are just you know crazy <laughs> yeah so 
if you want to put the work in and you want to, you know, and you want to kill Gabe Deer and you want to build your confidence, you want to go into every season confident, it takes time. It takes from the time that, that, that you shoot a buck to the time that you shoot your next buck is work. Every day, all day, whether it's maps, on the computer, you know, walking, walking pieces, putting out trail cameras, you know, going to sit in stands without, you know, if I'm tagged out, I'll go, I'll, I'll go and sit and stand without, with, without a bow and just watch. I'll do that because I enjoy it. It's fun, you know, and, and, you, and you learn so much. You know, you, there's so much work that you put in to kill a, a, a giant buck that when you do it, you, and then nowadays you almost feel bad for doing it, you know? You almost feel bad for shooting a giant buck because then everybody's like, you know, I wish I could get that lucky or, or did you do, or, you know, as soon as, soon as you shoot a big buck, oh, that's a, that's a big farm buck. Uh, you know, everybody says that you poached it or this and that. And it's like, why is it like, why, why can't I just enjoy it? <laughs> I put all that work in, you know? Yeah. It's, 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 it's crazy, man. But the best thing I can tell anybody that wants to learn how to, you know, and wants to be good at killing big deer. It's just like, just like you said, just like homie said, putting in the work, man. You have to put in the work, plain and simple. I mean, you're not putting in work, then you're not, you're not going to get anything. That's how I wanted to end this podcast. Was I, you know, I wanted to ask what's the biggest factor in getting it done, and I think we just covered it right there. You know, uh, just, I mean, just so the listeners know, I mean, you're not hunting a huge farm. There's other hunters on your farm. You're hunting uh, where, I mean, they push deer, uh, the farmer's always out there, they're building ponds. I mean, uh, you're, you know, you're not a, a super wealthy guy, you know, you're just a normal yeah. average day guy that put the work in and got yeah. it done. And that's what me and homie drive for for this podcast is we wanted to find guys just like you because we know they're out there. There's guys out there that are just doing it right and they're successful year after year, just like you've been. And they got secrets. And the, the seems like a lot of the secret <laughs> is is just pure work, you yeah. know, and pure love of deer hunting. Yeah, I mean, just like I mean, just like you know, you guys, you guys got that got that second tag, and you called me, you know, and homies out checking cameras, and me and you talking, waiting on him. Like that's what it takes, man. It's Saturday, and you guys about to do a podcast, and my dude's out checking cameras. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm like, I'm holding up because we're getting ready to pull camps. He'll be here in a minute. You know, he's on the way. That's, I mean, and like most people, second gun season's done. We just had a ton of snow flew in, and people were just done hunting. A lot of people were just like, eh. There's literally no trucks alongside the road yeah. anywhere it's right just, now. There, it's over. You know, the rut's over, but my mobile cam's still showing bucks out there. A lot of does yeah. out there. Which- you know? I mean, me and you, I mean, everybody Everybody can see that. Everybody sees both sides of that. Cause me and you, I mean, homie has, has, has heard it. All my friends have heard it. Everybody's heard it. Me and you got to the point where we're like, man, I'm done. I'm burned out. I'm not going to kill him. I'm done trying. Like, you know, mm-hmm. everybody gets to that point. But that's the important part, man. You have to push through that point. Yeah, you know? yeah, you got to get to that. You're going to get to that point. I was at the point where... I wasn't going to quit, but I told homie, I said, I don't think I'm going to get it done. Even though I was calling it out on here as the first week of December, but man, the net, the amount of shots that were on the neighbors and they're talking about, oh, we're missing giants over here. And I mean, I'm just like, ah, you know, and, yeah, this year and then, it, then your mind runs. Well, I'm just one guy, you know, I got a small piece, you know, we've right. been hunting it a right. lot, you know, and then uh, yeah. you start thinking crazy and. You start questioning everything, you know. Yeah. And then you lose it, your confidence, it, and then you you lose that drive to hunt, you know, mm-hmm. all day. Yep. So. I mean, it took 60 days, 230 hours in the stand for me to actually kill this dude. That's nuts, man. I mean, two, 230 hours in a tree stand. or I mean, well, that's tree stand, ground blind, but that's that's hunting, you know. Yeah. 230 hours hunting to kill this deer, man, and... and I was to the point where I was ready to just say, you know, I'm shooting my number two and that's it. Yeah, I know you kept asking me, like, what do you think, man? I was like, "Ah, man, what buck stay? And then I'm always like, how well do you think your second buck will live through the year? And you're like, well, man, I really think he could make it. I'm like, (laughs) well, then you got, you you just answered the question right there. You know what I mean? So Yeah. Yeah, but then, you know, I don't know. And I'm glad I didn't end. And you know, and Preston knows, and all the, all these guys know that I was I was avoiding him. Stupid. Yeah, you were avoiding him. You were like, I'm not going over here because I know I'll probably end I'm up like, killing him. He's on camera all day, nonstop. 
I mean, and he's still a great deer. I mean, oh yeah, him. super stud. Like I don't know, real nice one sixties maybe. What, at yeah, least, and I, you know. know and I, you know, and, and, and I was like, you know, that's my, that would be my biggest deer. I can just go over there and shoot him and my season be done and hopefully pop him makes it. And then, then I started thinking like, look at all the hell you just went through mentally for the last year. Are you really ready, ready to go through that again? Because if he lives, God only knows what he's going to, what he's going to turn into. Yeah. I know. You know, and then that, that, that's a whole nother stretch. Are you going to have your deer aged? Are you going to send his teeth in or anything? Yeah. So. I, we had sent his jaw off, but the attached nervous also aged him, and he said that he thought that he was five. I thought he was five and a half. So yeah, if if he was if he was two in that first picture, he had like a hundred inch rack at, at two. Yeah, Which, I got a two year old that's packing a lot of heat right now, so it's doable. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, if they got sure. the genetics sure. and they got the ground, the food, and I think it's. I think it has a lot to do, like, how lazy does a buck have to be? How many does he, is he not, like, using all, when he's just in the summer, he's just like, well, I got all this extra nutrients, I'm just going to put it all to bone. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, and, and his body wasn't super, like, super huge. You know, so, and I think that since he wasn't real, like, a real uh, aggressive deer, I just think he just, like, naturally grew bigger just because he never, we're stressed out a whole lot. I don't think. Yeah. He just kind of he just kind of chilled. I mean, he he was never aggressive. Yeah. I got like two pictures of him with the buck I shot last year, and they're just kind of like you know, you know, like pretty much tickling horns, and that's about it. Yeah. That's the only time I've ever seen him even even do anything like that. So I mean, I I I think that has a little bit to do with it, but I mean, this this deer put on like I don't know what would you say, probably fifty inches. Put on a and lot, since, yeah. Yeah, since, since last year to a two or this year, well, we'll say forty. We'll say about forty, about, about forty inches. Yeah. And that I didn't expect that. You know, he was like a one fifty five, maybe one sixty last year, and I, I was banking on him being like a one seventy five to like a one eighty this, this year. Yeah. And he definitely surprised the hell out of me. Well, I mean, man, he blew up for sure. <laughs> We appreciate but you yeah, spending. Man, I mean, it's it's been you know it's been a blast sharing your story, my story. I mean, it was it was uh, a, a a straight roller coaster ride, <laughs> you know, from start to finish. But uh, it's definitely definitely worth it, man. And I definitely appreciate being being on being on this podcast and being able to share it all, man. Yeah, I appreciate you letting me be part of your story because. That, like I said, that's the best thing about this. My phone is just nonstop deer every day. Like, it's hard to, like, get away from it because it's just, like, trail cam pictures in December. And you're like, because <laughs> the guys yeah. down south are just starting to rut. They're getting pumped up, you know. So, me and homie are living the rut right now for yeah. Texas and Georgia and <laughs> Mississippi. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah. so, I appreciate you yeah. letting me, you know, follow your deer. You know, I know a deer like that you don't want a lot of people to know about, you know. So, I appreciate but, you, you know, creating a friendship with with me and homie, and uh, and let me follow your deer, and uh, hopefully next year we both got a story to follow, and hopefully we have uh, equal outcomes like this year. It'd be pretty neat if we do it back to back, man. We got to get together, do something. <laughs> we need to get oh, together sure and go what? roll some dice or something. <laughs> oh yeah, we're taking we're taking a trip to Vegas. <laughs> All right, man. We appreciate your time. Uh, we're going to get off here. And uh, just to the listeners, uh, again, normal guy, uh, pressured ground, getting it done on a giant, just on pure passion of deer hunting and pure worth ethic and just never giving up. So um, get out there, make some memories, uh, leave a legacy. White Tail Legacy's out. <laughs>